All right, so we're going to start off with a little review on hybridization. Um, like I said, this should be a review, um, but it's very important that we have a good understanding of bonding um, before we uh, delve a little deeper into organic chemistry. So, um, like you know, um, atoms are essentially these atomic orbitals, that's what we call them, and uh, they're, they contain the electrons, and um, molecules are made up not of these, of combinations of these atomic orbitals, but rather um, various theories have been proposed that describe what these interactions produce, and some uh, like molecular, molecular orbital theory um, does a good job explaining the energetics um, and why bonds form. Um, and uh, hybridization does um, a good job of if simply explaining the, uh, the preferred bond angles, the preferred geometries, and that's what we're going to start off with. Um, so um, I'm going to kind of be a review with electron configurations, but uh, when we look at different atoms, um, we'll start off with carbon. You know, that's going to be very important to us in organic chemistry. Um, we're talking about the valence orbitals. We've got uh, the 2s and the 2p orbitals. You should know what these look like. But here they are. Um, we know uh, carbon has four valence electrons, so we're going to go ahead and draw these in. And this should all be a review. So um, we know that this isn't preferred. We have an empty orbital over here, an empty 2p orbital. We also have uh, unpaired electrons in the 2p orbitals. So that's not preferred energetically. So um, what ends up happening is we get this hybridization of these two orbitals into what we call a 2p, sorry, 2sp3 hybridized orbital. And it's essentially just a hybrid combination of these into degenerate or relatively degenerate. Um, they're not quite degenerate or of the same energy because the 2pz orbital is actually slightly higher in energy than the other p orbitals. But um, for all intents and purposes, they're degenerate orbitals. And we can go ahead and pair, repair these electrons up, or in this case, they won't be paired, but we'll go ahead and put them in the orbitals like this. And we can see that now all the electrons are in relatively similar energy orbitals, and they're all unpaired. So this is going to minimize repulsions. It's going to be the most stable uh, state we can get for carbon. And you can think of these as unpaired electrons, and we know that electrons do like to be paired, so that's going to allow carbon to form bonds with uh, different atoms, and these unpaired electrons are going to be the ones that are forming the bonds, because we know that covalent bonds are the sharing of electrons, so carbon's going to have unpaired electrons that might form a bond with a different atom, and then we pair up these electrons to form a bond, um, because we know that just a typical sigma bond is going to have two electrons contained in it. So um, here we can see that we have four unpaired uh, electrons, and we also know that carbon uh, uh, makes four bonds. So we know that that's the, the preferred valence of carbon. It, it likes to form four bonds. So um, we'll just keep that in mind as we roll through um, other elements on in this row. Um, so we'll just go over to nitrogen. So um, again, we have our s same orbitals here. Uh, we're, I mean, we're in the same energy. It's going to be that um, we know we have five electrons now. So when we go ahead and pair these up, um, you might say, well, this is fairly stable. We have our electrons paired here. All three are unpaired in the 2p orbital. Yes, they still form uh, this hybrid orbital of uh, degenerate energy states, it's at 2sp3, and when we go ahead and place these, you think, well, this seems a little more organized or uh, symmetric than this does, but we'll go ahead and see why these hybrid orbitals explain, um, they, it's a, it explains the molecules that nitrogen makes, um, the bonds it makes very well. So. 
um, keeping in mind what we did for carbon, where it makes four bonds, we see that nitrogen has three unpaired electrons. So um, we know that in covalent bonds, uh, electrons are being shared between atoms. So these are three electrons that nitrogen can share with a different atom to form a sigma bond. Um, we see here uh, we have this paired uh, this pair of electrons, and this pair of electrons is going to exist as a lone pair, you might have guessed. Um, so all five of these electrons are depicted here, and uh, that makes sense because we know that nitrogen makes three bonds, it has a lone pair, um, and that's its preferred um, conformation, if you will. Uh, it's the, the way nitrogen uh, is found in nature. So again, let's just keep rolling here and we will move on to oxygen. And you might be seeing a pattern here, you might be able to predict what's going to happen, but you can see that oxygen has six valence electrons. We go ahead and we place these here. And when we hybridize into the sp3 hybridized orbital, we can place these electrons this way in these orbitals. And we know that oxygen forms two bonds. It has two lone pairs. We see that in water, for example. So we know, we know how oxygen looks. But why is that? Well, we have these two electrons that are unpaired that can form a sigma bond with hydrogen. We know that hydrogen is going to offer one electron. So we can think of it as this electron, and better go ahead and write it this way, it's the spin down here. And we know that uh, these electrons here and these electrons here are going to form a bond. We know that these two here are going to be already paired, they're going to form this lone pair, and that is the explanation, or at least one explanation, uh, in very crude detail. Um, of why oxygen is forming these two bonds as two lone pairs. That's what we see in nature. That's its preferred um, stability, its preferred conformation. So um, that's, again, this should be a review, but um, it's important that we have a, a strong understanding of hybrid orbitals. Um, and you should already know the, the preferred bond angles, uh, the geometries of molecules like water, molecules like um, or molecules containing sp3 hybridized carbons, all these things. Um, this should all come as a review, but it's very important that we have a good understanding of this before we go deeper into organic chemistry.